A very good evening aspirants. Welcome you to the Hindu News Analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy for the date 9th of October 2022. Displayed here are the list of articles that we are going to discuss today. You can go through it. Now let's start our discussion. Take a look at this news article. This news article talks about monkey pox. The article says that there is a possibility of transmission of monkey pox to the rodents outside the usual range in West and Central Africa. And if this transmission happens, the rodents will transfer the virus back to humans which will result in increasing spiral of cases. So this is the essence of the article given here. In this context, let's learn about monkey pox, its causes, symptoms, transmission and the prevention. Now let's start with monkey pox. See, monkey pox is a zoonotic disease that caused by zoonotic virus which will infect both humans as well as animals including rodents and other primate species. The virus belongs to the orthopox virus genus of the poxyviridae family. Now talking about symptoms, see the disease carries symptoms that are similar to those previously seen in smallpox patients. Symptoms of monkeypox include fever, headache, muscle pain and lethargy along with rashes and blisters commonly on the face, palms, feet, mouth or eyes. These symptoms generally appear within 2 weeks since infection but can last for 2-4 to four weeks with severe cases mostly occurring in children. In most cases, monkeypox is a self-limited disease that resolves spontaneously without any specific treatment. However, newborns, young children and the people with fundamental immune deficiencies may be more likely to develop severe symptoms. So this is all regarding symptoms. Now let's see about the transmission of the virus. See, the virus can be transmitted from both animals to humans and between humans. Here, animal to human transmission of the virus can result from close contact with blood, fluids or skin lesions of infected animals. And to human to human transmission could happen through the close contact and through body secretions, skin lesions or through contaminated articles of individuals infected with monkeypox. It can also be spread through large respiratory droplets such as coughing and sneezing. Here you must note one thing, close human contact during sexual activities is believed to be the primary driver of the current spread of the disease due to its predominant spread in gay, bisexual and MSM communities. Here the MSM means men who have sex with men. Now let's see about the current prevention and treatment options against monkeypox. See there are no specific treatments available for monkeypox. Clinical management of monkeypox includes relieving symptoms and managing complications and preventing long term effects. It is also not currently understood if a previous monkeypox infection leads productive immunity against future infections. However, due to the genetic similarities of smallpox and monkeypox viruses, vaccines and antiviral agents used for the worldwide eradication of smallpox can also protect against monkeypox. The WHO report shows that the vaccination against smallpox is approximately 85% effective in preventing monkeypox and thus prior immunization against smallpox may lead to mild disease. Also, studies are now being conducted to understand the effectiveness and feasibility of vaccination in preventing monkeypox. So, this is all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, you saw about monkeypox, its cause, symptoms, transmission and the prevention. With these learned points, now let's move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at this news article. It talks about organization of the petroleum exporting countries. We shortly call this as OPEC+. Plus. See, recently OPEC Plus has announced that it would cut oil production by 2 million barrels per day. So, the news article here speaks about India's preparedness over the prevalent situation. Now, in this context, let us learn about the two oil producing cartels, OPEC and OPEC Plus. Firstly, coming to the OPEC, see OPEC stands for Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries. It is a permanent intergovernmental organization comprises of 13 oil exporting nations. It was created in the year 1960 at the Baghdad conference by five countries. They are Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia and Venezuela. See, these countries are also known as founding members of the OPEC. Here, the other members of the OPEC are Algeria, Angola, Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, Libya, Nigeria and United Arab Emirates. Note that earlier Qatar was also a member but it left OPEC on January 2019. Also know that the most recent country to exit OPEC is Ecuador, which left OPEC in January 2021. Also, other oil exporting nations can join OPEC meetings as observers. Now let's see what are all the conditions that oil exporting country need to fulfill to become a member of the OPEC. See, any country with a substantial net export of crude petroleum which has fundamentally similar interests to those of member countries may become a 
full member of the organization here note that to become a full time member of opec a majority of 3 by 4th votes of already existing full time members is needed including the concurring votes of all founding members so this is about the eligibility conditions now coming to the objective the main objective of opec is to coordinate and unify petroleum policies among member countries it also has the mandate to secure fair and stable prices for petroleum producers and to develop an efficient economic and regular supply of petroleum to consuming nations which in turn ensures a fair return on capital to those investing in the crude oil industry so this is about the objective see the headquarters of opec is located in vienna which is in austria the opec secretariat is the executive organ of opec it is also located in vienna also know that the report world oil outlook is released by opec so this is all about opec now talking about opec plus see it is a group of 23 oil producing nations made up of 13 members of the opec and 10 other non opec members which includes russia azerbaijan bahrain brunei kazakhstan malaysia mexico oman south sudan and sudan know that opec plus format was born in the year 2016 it came into existence with a deal to coordinate oil production among the other oil producing countries which are outside opec in a bid to stabilize prices of oil since then the group has reached deals for members to voluntarily cut or ramp up production in response to changes in global oil prices see the today's news article reports that opec plus has planned to cut oil production by 2 million barrels per day to have a relative understanding know this fact worldwide consumption of oil per day is approximately 10 million barrels So this cut in oil production is a significant one. As a cartel, the OPEC plus member countries collectively agree on how much oil to produce, which directly impacts the ready supply of crude oil in the global market at any given time. OPEC plus subsequently exerts considerable influence over the global market price of oil and tends to keep it relatively high in order to maximize profitability. Also know that USA has called this decision to cut oil production as a short-sighted one. So this is all with respect to OPEC and OPEC Plus. So in this discussion, we saw about the objectives of both OPEC and OPEC Plus, and also about the members of both OPEC and OPEC Plus. So with these key points, now let's move on to the next news article discussion. Take a look at the science page article. It talks about heat waves. See, the article says that many improvements were made in the process of predicting and reporting of heat waves in India. The article also speaks about the recent study published in the scientific reports. by the scientists at the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology Pune and some other studies published in international journals the studies has shown that the heat wave genesis and duration of heat waves in india can be predicted with a good skill up to 2 weeks in advance and at some times it can be predicted even one season in advance so this is the crux of the news article given here in this context let us see about heat waves in detail first of all what is a heat wave See a heat wave is a period of abnormally high temperatures which last over 3 days. The extreme temperatures and resultant atmospheric conditions adversely affect people living in these regions as they cause physiological stress sometimes resulting in death. According to Indian Meteorological Department heat waves can be declared when it met the following conditions. They are first the temperature of a station reaches at least 40 degree celsius for plains then at least 30 degree celsius for hilly regions and the highest temperature criterion for the coastal zone is 37 degree celsius also when actual maximum temperature remains 45 degree celsius or more irrespective of the normal maximum temperature so these are all conditions which need to be satisfied to declare heat waves in india now coming to the reasons for heat waves in india see the apparent movement of sun towards northern direction during the months of may and june resulting in high pressure formation in inland india which results in abrupt temperature increase in the central and northwestern parts of india and the heat waves is further accelerated by the climatic change phenomenon so this is the primary reason for the development of heat waves in india during summer months now coming to the impacts of heat waves see the human body feels the impact of increased stress due to the heat waves some of it results in fatality then some ecological impacts include low farm productivity drought forest fires etc So these are all some of the impacts. Now talking about the strategy to mitigate heat waves, see the prediction mechanisms like the one mentioned in today's article need to be used extensively to increase the preparedness of the government to face such extreme events. Then urban greening needs to be done by city administrations to reduce the heat island effects caused during the heat waves. 
and information dissemination needs to be done effectively to make people aware of the health hazards brought by the heat waves. So these are all some of the suggestions which can be incorporated to contain heat waves in India. So this is all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw about heat waves, then the conditions that needed to be declared heat waves, then the reasons for heat waves, then the impacts and finally some solutions to mitigate heat waves. So with these learned points now let's move on to the next news article discussion. Next we are going to take this FAQ article for our discussion. This is about the Nobel Prize for Physics. Nobel Committee of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences announced the names of three physicists as the laureates for the Nobel Prize in Physics. They are Alain Aspect, Anton Zellinger and John Glasser. As we all know, they are awarded the Nobel Prize for experimental work in quantum entanglement. So this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us understand quantum computing and other important facts related to it. Before getting into discussion, the syllabus relevant to this article is highlighted here for your reference. Just go through it. First of all, let us go through the basics. So what is quantum mechanics? See, quantum mechanics is a subfield of physics that describes the behavior of particles such as atoms, electrons, photons and almost everything in the molecular and submolecular realm. It was developed during the first half of the 20th century. See the results of quantum mechanics are often extremely strange and counterintuitive. I will tell you why. At the scale of atoms and electrons, many of the equations of classical mechanics ceases to be useful. Now you should know what is classical mechanics. It is often called as Newtonian mechanics because nearly the entire study builds on the work of Sir Isaac Newton. The mathematical study of the motion of everyday objects and the forces that affect them is called classical mechanics. And this won't be useful to study the particles in the molecular realm. This is where quantum mechanics comes to play. Now we will see a situation to understand better. See in classical mechanics, objects exist in a specific place at a specific time. But in quantum mechanics, objects instead exist in a haze of probability. This means that they have a certain chance of being at point A and another chance of being at point B and so on. So say in simple words, many of the concepts that were useful in visualizing the movement of the particles in the classical realm do not work when applied to particles obeying quantum mechanics. For example, when a tennis ball is stuck, we can see that it traces out a definite path in space. So the path it traces out is called a trajectory. See, it is possible to calculate the trajectory of the ball. And there is no restriction on measuring the speed or momentum of the ball at every point on the trajectory. But particles that fall in the quantum regime, on the other hand, do not even possess a definite trajectory. This is because they are not little hard spheres that we were initially imagined. But they are weird wave-like quantum objects. Because of this, there is a limit to how precisely we can measure the position and momentum of these particles simultaneously. So this is about the quantum mechanics. To conclude, quantum mechanics is nothing but study of particles at molecular realm. Know that the technology that works by using the principle of quantum mechanics is called the quantum technology. This includes quantum computing, quantum entanglement and quantum superposition. Firstly, let us see about the quantum superimposition. I will explain it with an example. Imagine touching the surface of a pond at two different points at the same time. Here the waves could spread outward from each point, eventually overlapping to form a more complex pattern. This is a superposition of waves. Similarly, in quantum science, objects such as electrons and photons have wave-like properties that can combine and become what is called superposed. So this is about quantum superimposition. Secondly, let us see about the quantum entanglement. Quantum entanglement is a phenomenon that explains how two subatomic particles can be intimately linked to each other. It is entangled in such a way that aspects of one particle of an entangled pair depend on the aspects of the other particle. The most interesting part here is that they remain connected even when they are separated by vast distances. Here these particles could be any subatomic particles. For example, electrons or protons. And the aspect could be in the state it is in, that is whether it is spinning in one direction or another. The strange part of quantum entanglement is that when you measure something about one particle in an entangled pair, you immediately know something about the other particle, even if they are millions of light years apart. Albert Einstein famously called the phenomenon as spooky action at a distance. And for the work in this phenomenon only, Nobel Prize was awarded. John Glasser and Alien Aspect devised sophisticated experiments to test quantum entanglement. And they established through Bell's inequality that entanglement was a consequence of quantum physics. The third laureate, Anton Zellinger, and his group used the phenomenon of entanglement to perform what is called quantum teleportation. 
This is a way of conveying information from one place to another without the actual transport of material. Lastly, let us come to the quantum computing. As we already saw, quantum computing is a quantum technology. It is a rapidly emerging technology that harnesses the laws of quantum mechanics to solve problems that are too complex for classical computers. First of all, what is computing? See, computing is the process of using computer technology to complete a given goal-oriented task. It encompasses the design and development of software and hardware systems for a broad range of purposes. So, quantum computing covers the problems that are too complex for classical computers. Now, you may ask how it solve complex problems. See, quantum computing focuses on the development of computer technologies that is centered around the principles of quantum theory. As we saw already, quantum theory explains the nature and behavior of energy and matter on the quantum that is atomic and subatomic level. Quantum computing uses subatomic particles such as electrons or photons. Also, quantum computing uses a combination of bits to perform specific computational tasks. And these bits are called qubits. These help the quantum computers to function at a higher efficiency than the classical counterparts. Development of quantum computers mark a leap forward in computing capability. This is because quantum computers have massive performance gains for specific uses. For example, quantum computing excels at simulations. See, the quantum computers gains much of its processing power through the ability of the bits to be in multiple states at one time. Do you remember the example now? We saw that in quantum mechanics, particles have a certain chance of being at point A and another chance of being at point B and so on. Here, they can perform tasks using a combination of 1s and zeros, and they have the chance of being both 1 and 0. This is quantum bits or qubits, which allows particle to exist in more than one state, that is 1 and 0 at the same time. See, quantum computers are elegant machines, smaller and requiring less energy than the supercomputers. The processors use supercooled superfluids to create superconductors. This is because the processors need to be very cold and they use the phenomenon of superimposition. See, a qubit itself isn't very useful, but it can perform an important trick. See, after placing the quantum information, it holds into a state of superposition. This represents a combination of all possible configurations of the qubit. Group of qubits in superposition can create complex multidimensional computational spaces and complex problems can be represented in new ways in these spaces. And this is how qubits perform complex functions. Quantum computers use one more phenomena which is called quantum entanglement. This we saw before itself. Entanglement is a quantum mechanical effect that correlates the behavior of two separate things. When two qubits are entangled, changes to one qubit directly impact the other. Quantum algorithms leverage these relationships to find solutions to complex problems. Now let's see how it is different from conventional computing. Here the basic difference is what we just saw. Conventional computing or conventional computers are the fourth generation of computers. In this computing, the classical phenomenon of the electrical circuit is used. According to the phenomenon, there is only one state at a time which is either on or off. At the same time, quantum computing or quantum computers are the fifth generation of computers. The phenomenon of quantum mechanism is used. According to this phenomenon, there can be more than one state at the same time. The next difference is about the processing. With the help of bit, that is 0 or 1, the information storage and manipulation are done in conventional computing. The bit is further based on charge or voltage. 0 is used to show the low voltage and 1 is used to show the high voltage or current. If the number of charges is linked together, it will only increase in the computing power. Now in the quantum computers, information storage and manipulation are done with the help of qubit or quantum bit. The qubit is further based on the phenomenon of spinning electrons or on the polarization of single photon. So the power of quantum computing will be exponentially increased if number of qubits are linked together. The next difference is the tasks performed. See, conventional computing represents the information with the help of binary codes, that is, bit 0 or bit 1. If our everyday task is required to be completed with the help of a computer, then in this case, classical computers will be useful. While quantum computing represents the information with the help of qubits 0, 1 and the superposition state of both 0 and 1. If you want to run simulations and data analysis like drug and chemical trials, then in the case, quantum computers will be very useful. The computers which we used for chemical and drug trials must have to be kept ultra cold. However, these types of computers are very difficult to build and it is also very expensive. So these are all some of the differences between conventional computing and quantum computing.
so this is about some of the basics that you should know about the quantum mechanics and technology and it is believed that quantum technologies will play a major role in the future to perform many functions and keeping this in mind india has announced a national mission on quantum technologies and applications with a total budget outlay of rupees 8000 crore it was announced in the 2020 budget for a period of 5 years is to be implemented by the department of science and technology so that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about quantum mechanics then quantum technology then other terms like quantum computing quantum entanglement quantum superposition and then how it solves the complex problems and finally about the differences between conventional computing and quantum computing so with these learned points now let's move on to the next news article discussion See this article here it says that a petition was admitted by the supreme court for the introduction of technology to allow visually challenged voters to verify their votes the petition was filed by mumbai based activist akshay bajat he suggested that image text to speech conversion software should be added to the electronic voting machines we shortly call this as evm and voter verifiable paper audit trail we shortly call this as vvpat units So this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let's learn about electronic voting machines and VVPAT. First of all, let us see about electronic voting machines. See, electronic voting machine is the replacement of the ballot box in the election process. The idea was first conceived in the year 1977. In 1979, a prototype was developed, which was demonstrated by the Election Commission. And the first time use of electronic voting machines occurred in the general election. in may 1982 but owing to the absence of specific law prescribing the use of evms supreme court struck down the election subsequently in the year 1989 the parliament amended the representation of the people act 1951 to create a provision for the use of electronic voting machines in the elections see a general consensus on the introduction of evm was reached only in 1998 and evms were used in 25 legislative assembly constituencies which were spread across three states of madhya pradesh rajasthan stan and delhi it was further expanded in 1999 to 45 parliamentary constituencies and later in february 2000 to 45 assembly constituencies of the haryana assembly elections in the 2000 state assembly elections of tamil nadu kerala puducherry and west bengal the evms were used in the all assembly constituencies since then for every state assembly election the commission has used the electronic voting machines and finally in 2004 in the general election to the lok sabha the electronic voting machines were used in all 543 parliamentary constituencies in the country so this is the history of the introduction of electronic voting machines now coming to the function of electronic voting machines see an electronic voting machine is an electronic device used for recording votes it consists of two units namely control unit and balloting unit these units are joined together by a cable here the control unit of the evm is kept with the presiding officer or the polling officer then the balloting unit is kept within the voting compartment for electors to cast their votes see the electronic voting machine is a reliable system to conduct elections where one person has to be elected out of many candidates so the evm is designed for a single post and a single vote through an evm a voter can cast their vote for the candidate of their choice or choose the not option see these evms are used because they have certain advantages See firstly voting by EVMs has made the process simpler as one does not need to mark a ballot paper and put it in the ballot box in an EVM the voter has to just press the button against the candidate and symbol of his choice and the vote gets recorded secondly the scope of invalid vote is eliminated which could not be possible in the paper ballot system thirdly the counting process is very quick and the result can be declared in hours as opposed to days fourthly there is no need for printing millions of ballot papers this leads to saving of money on account of paper printing transportation storage and distribution finally there are both audio and visual indications of the voter to be assured that his vote is recorded correctly As soon as a voter presses the blue button, the lamp against the symbol of his chosen candidate glows red, and a long beep is heard. So this is all regarding EVMs. Now let's know some facts about VVPAT. See, VVPAT is an independent system which is attached to the electronic voting machines. It allows the voters to verify that their votes are cast as they have intended. A printer is attached to the EVM and is kept in the voting compartment. And the printer prints a slip that contains the serial number, name of the candidate, symbol of the candidate for whom the voter has casted the vote. Here the printed slip remains exposed for 7 seconds under a transparent window and then get cuts automatically and falls into a drop box which remains sealed. 
okay so this is about v part so that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion you saw about the background for introducing electronic voting machines and about the functioning of electronic voting machines and v part so with these learned points now let's move on to the next part of the news article discussion that is to discuss preliminary practice questions now look at this first question consider the following statements let's take up the first statement monkeypox virus is a zoonotic disease which can also transfer from human to human here the statement one is correct yes it is a zoonotic disease which also transfers from human to human which we saw in our discussion now let's take second statement even though monkeypox looks similar to smallpox genus of these two viruses are totally different here the statement two is incorrect because as we know from our discussion that both the monkeypox and smallpox belong to the same genus called orthopox virus so the statement two is incorrect here the question asks for correct statement so the answer for the question is option a one only now coming to the second question consider the following countries here the list of countries are given here the question is which of the above mentioned countries are members of organization of the petroleum exporting countries here all the countries except ecuador are members of opec as we see in our discussion the ecuador left the opec in january 2021 So the correct answer for the question is option A, one, two, three, five only. Okay. Now moving on to the third question, which among the following are the applications of quantum computing? First one, numerical weather prediction. Second one, simulations. Third one, cyber security. Fourth one, cryptography. Which of the above statement is correct? See, quantum technologies are rapidly developing globally with a huge disruptive potential. Their applications include those in aerospace engineering. numerical weather prediction simulations securing the communications and financial transactions cyber security advanced manufacturing health agriculture education and etc and quantum principles will be used for engineering solutions to complex problems in computing communications sensing chemistry cryptography imaging and mechanics so all the applications given here is correct therefore the answer for the question is option d 1 2 3 and 4 this played here is the quiz question for you today i will post this quiz question in a community section try to answer it given here is the mains practice question for you today interested aspirants can write and post it in the comment section we have come to the end of our discussion if you like our analysis please like comment and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to shankar ai academy youtube channel thank you